In today's video, we will be debating King Frederick Wilhelm of Prussia, an emperor of Germany who is also known as the 99-day emperor. His long wait for the throne, his fairly liberal beliefs and a fatal misdiagnosis from his doctors makes Frederick a memorable yet tragic figure in history. Frederick III, in German Friedrich Wilhelm Nikolaus Karl, was born on October 18, 1831 in Potsdam as the first-born son of the future King of Prussia and Emperor of Germany Wilhelm I and his wife Augusta. When Frederick was nine years old, his father became Emperor and so he had to take on his role as Crown Prince, which meant undergoing a rigorous education. All his teachers were male and his lectures were focusing on military skills. However, he was also taught in history, craftsmanship and foreign languages. After turning 18, Frederick went on to study law at the University of Bonn, where he was lectured in governmental affairs and monarchical rulership. During this time, he met his future wife, Princess Victoria, the oldest daughter of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. When their engagement went public, opinions were quite divergent. The Prussian court feared that Victoria would take a stand for British interests and thus influence her husband Frederick on her behalf. Even Victoria's father, Queen Consort Prince Albert, who was German himself, worried about a union. The German Emperor Wilhelm was known to be conservative and opposed to the English system. Nevertheless, Frederick and Victoria got married in St. James Palace in London in 1858 and went on to live in Charlottenburg, Berlin. The marriage was said to be a happy one and it produced eight children. As Frederick involved Victoria in his decisions, she was able to voice her liberal beliefs. Although Frederick was influenced by liberal, constitutional and middle-class ideas from his wife and trusted advisors, he retained a strong sense of Hohenzollern royal and imperial dignity. However, Frederick became the hope of liberals in Germany, as his father was as conservative as can be and reforms were hardly made. During his time as crown prince, Frederick was widely excluded from governmental affairs since his father contradicted any liberal reforms. Yet, Frederick turned out to be a successful military commander in the Danish War of 1864, the Seven Weeks War of 1866 and the Franco-German War of 1870. Therefore, he became very popular as a war hero in Germany. Although Frederick supported Imperial Chancellor Bismarck in the War of 1866, the so-called blood and iron notions of Bismarck's domestic and international policies were alien to him. The mutual dislike estranged and isolated Frederick and his wife even more from Emperor Wilhelm, as Bismarck was one of his most trusted advisors. The wait for the throne turned out to be unforeseen long. While his father survived multiple assassination attempts and remained healthy as getting older, Frederick's health started to decline dramatically. From 1887 on, Crown Prince Frederick William, who was a heavy smoker, had been suffering increasingly from hoarseness. Initially, this was attributed to a strenuous maneuver, but when matters got worse, larynx specialist Karl Gerhard was called in who finally discovered lumps on the left vocal cord which they initially tried to remove in an agonizing procedure. However, another tumor soon appeared on the vocal cord. Another surgeon, Ernst von Bergmann, was consulted, who suspected a carcinoma and recommended the removal of the affected tissue by splitting the larynx. This procedure, however, was declined, as it appeared to be very drastic. Now, English laryngologist Maura McKenzie was invited. Despite the German medicals diagnosing cancer of the left vocal cord, Mackenzie opposed their diagnosis. Following his take, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess traveled to England, where Mackenzie was to continue his treatment. His wife supported Frederick during his ordeal, though she was biased and only trusted Mackenzie. Maybe because he was English, maybe because his diagnosis gave some hope, we don't know. In England, another piece of tissue was removed from Frederick's vocal cord and sent to German expert Rudolf Virchow, who was a renowned scientist. He backed up McKenzie's diagnosis that there was no cancer cells to be found. After that, Frederick refused to have any more tissue samples taken against the advice of German physicians. 
Frederick and Victoria went on to travel to Italy, whose milder climate was supposed to alleviate his complaints. They resided in Villa Sirio, where they were visited by their son Wilhelm. Wilhelm, who took after his grandfather, Emperor Wilhelm, was strictly conservative and mistrusted the English doctor. He was shocked to see his father, who was in a terrible condition. Therefore, he ordered the German doctors to join him and see his father. All of them came to the same conclusion, that the crown prince was suffering from severe cancer. One of them informed Frederick of his condition, avoiding the word cancer, but giving him the choice of an extirpation or tracheotomy. Frederick Willem opted for the latter if it was necessary. As his condition worsened and he started suffering from choking, the operation was performed. He was now able to breathe again, but also lost most of his voice. A month after this traumatic procedure, Frederick's father, Emperor Wilhelm, died in 1888, making him the new King of Prussia and Emperor of Germany. Frederick and Victoria returned to Berlin to take their place but the new emperor was nothing like the tall and imposing man the people remembered. Frederick was dying and it was obvious to everyone. He was even too weak to march in his father's funeral procession and had to be replaced by his son Wilhelm. He wept and watched from his rooms in the Charlottenburg Palace. The new imperial couple tried to take many trips with the carriage in public to be seen by the German people. However, Frederick's condition was obvious, even though they tried to hide his breathing tube under his bed. Frederick III's reign was only going to last 99 days, during which he was hardly able to reign at all due to his disease. He died on the 15th of June 1888, aged 56, and with him died the hopes of a more liberal Germany. Frederick was succeeded by his older son Wilhelm, who was volatile and anti-reforms and is probably best known for starting World War I. Frederick III was considered the liberal hope of Prussia and the German Empire after 1871, which had been dashed by his late accession and early death. It is uncertain, however, how liberal the policies of Frederick, who wavered between Prussian military tradition and liberal views, would actually have been. It is also debatable how his health would have developed if Frederick would have obtained the right diagnosis earlier and thus received a suitable treatment. Maybe he would have lived longer to pursue a more liberal approach. As Crown Prince, he had proven to be a conservative constitutionalist who was not interested in a further development of the imperial constitution, for example, toward a stronger parliament. The liberal hopes stem from a speech in Dunst in 1863, in which he distanced himself from the restrictions imposed on the liberal press. However, he probably did so less out of a fundamental concern for freedom of the press, rather than fearing an alienation between the ruling dynasty and the population. In 1878, when he was a deputy to his father, who had been wounded in another assassination attempt, he was convinced of the necessity of a socialist law passed that year, but was careful to ensure that no constitutional breach occurred in the process. What probably made Frederick to be considered the liberal hope was his opposition on the rising anti-Semitism in Germany in the 1900s, and that together with his wife Victoria, he had devoted himself to promoting science, art and culture in Prussia. Overall, it is fair to say that Frederick III was more liberal than the rest of his family, which was not a challenge considering the conservatism of Prussia. We can't be sure to what extent he would have reformed the German Empire and if he would have considered a liberal parliamentary state similar to the British model of a time. Some of it was probably wishful thinking of liberals, but it is safe to say that Frederick would have made a more suitable liberal emperor than his son Wilhelm, who led Germany and the world into chaos.